Hey folks, welcome back. As you'll see behind me, I'm standing in front of my boat today, and the reason being is up here in central Ontario, our window of opportunity for getting out in this thing can be pretty short at times. So I'm gonna get this thing out on the water, but in the meantime, I wanna show you something that I did to this boat, this being a 99 Chaparral 180 SE. I'm gonna show you what I did to this boat in order to make it a little more user-friendly. Now, this boat didn't come with a swim platform from the factory. And if you guys have ever tried to price out a swim platform for the aftermarket, they're very, very expensive. So what I did was I took some of my know-how with woodworking and I tried to incorporate it into this boat. Didn't know how it was going to go, but I think it turned out pretty well. So come on around back and I'll show you what I did. So what you're seeing in front of you is this. You're seeing a custom swim platform that I made out of wood in order to work with my 99 Chaparral 180 SE. This is made out of red oak and it's made using some bracketry that you can find at your local hardware store. So having a look under here, this, one on each side, is a bracket that you would buy for assembling docks. You can get this at any hardware store. That's what that little notch is for. It's where a chain goes in to anchor the dock. All right? This hardware, stainless steel. Okay. This right here, obviously I had to buy this, but this... is a swim platform or a uh, swim ladder. So you can buy this on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. These right here, this is where I had to get a little, you know, a little engineer if, is that a word? Anyways, I had to figure out a solution in order to support this without just relying on those brackets because that bracket would have way too much leverage since this swim platform is a few feet out. So I had to come up with something else that also wouldn't interfere with the motor. What this is, this is just a piece of gas pipe. So this is, a, uh, this is a piece of gas pipe down here. Get right in there, there's some hardware. So that angle, I had to do a bit of figuring, but that angle is uh, just a standard angled piece from the hardware store, I think from Home Depot. This is just a, uh, a, a base that you can also buy from Home Depot. And up here is just a piece of stainless hardware. I had to flatten the pipe and bend it a little in order to secure it up to the top of the swim platform. So, Hardest part here, getting the radius of the back of the boat correct. So this piece of wood right here, if we look underneath, it's a radius, and it was the hardest piece. After that, all of these are just standard, you know, rips on the old table saw. This was the only tough one. I actually made a cardboard template in order to get it fitted to the back of the boat perfectly. Once I did that, and once I had a, a good contour of the back of the boat, it was up to me to, to determine what shape I wanted. I wanted something that stuck out, but it wasn't going to be like a big piece of plywood on the back of the boat. I needed it to look half decent. So I just decided on this little angle here, okay, I don't even know what the measurements are. I just sort of looked at it and said, yeah, that looks good. And then what I did once I got that radius, I just had to figure out how I was going to support all those boards on the top. So what I did, as you can see, I've got a board or a section of wood that goes around the perimeter. And this is all screwed in to the top boards using stainless screws. And then from that perimeter piece, I then put a few pieces going perpendicular to the boards in order to hold those boards in place. And finally, swing around here. Right above each bracket, I put a wider piece, which is also secured with individual stainless screws. And I wasn't, I wasn't cheap on the screws. I put lots of those in. Okay, Let's swing around. You can see the other side here. So same thing goes. Now, this thing is a few years old now. I think overall, this thing is, geez, it's probably going on four years old. And what I did was I made it so it doesn't sit in the water. So when we're out boating, the only time this touches the water is when a wave comes up and hits it, or when I'm driving and I slow down and water washes up onto the back. But if I'm just sitting, the water level is actually right around here, maybe even a touch lower. So this wood is never submerged for very long. One other thing I'm going to point out before I uh, forget about it is I didn't want to have an access panel. And basically what an access panel is, 
when you trim the motor up on these inboard outboards, they come up just like this. On some swim platforms that are mounted lower, there's a hatch or an access panel. And what it allows is, it allows it to flip up so the motor, when trimmed up, doesn't hit this and get interference. I didn't want to deal with all that, so what I did was I just mounted it just above the highest point when it's trimmed fully upwards. The other thing I did in order to prevent some sort of interference was I mounted these so that they're as close to the motor as possible or as close to the outdrive as possible, but I can still turn to both extremes without it hitting. Now, the fun part, drilling into the hull. That was the hardest thing to convince myself that things would be okay. I drilled into the hull and where I drilled was into a location where I could access from the backside. Reason being is I wanted to put backer plates and these are backer plates. I don't know if you'll be able to see in the dark there. I think you probably can. If we swing down there, you can see the back of the bracket. The reason I wanted to do that was so that I could ensure that there was adequate support on the hull. When I get myself out on there, that's a fair bit of weight. If I were to put all that pressure on the back of the transom, well, who knows what would happen if I was just screwing willy-nilly into who knows what. And then what I did was I used some 3M adhesive. 3M makes a product specifically for attaching things through the hull that makes it waterproof. So I used that. And uh, ultimately, this has been going on four years, completely watertight, and I'm completely happy with it. So to keep this thing protected, you got to keep it from drying out. In order to do that, what I do every single year is I soak it in tongue oil. This tongue oil I use is made by Circa 1850. I get it at Home Hardware here in Canada. But that product there tends to do a real good job at keeping it protected. Now it's an oil, so it absorbs into the wood. I didn't want any type of sealant where it seals off the wood because if I ever get a hole in that or it breaks down and water gets in behind it, there's no way for that water to dry. So this allows for the absorption of the oil, which will keep the water out naturally and also allow for a nice finish. So if you don't have a swim platform on your boat and you've been thinking about it, what I can tell you is go ahead and try it. Just make sure you've got some basic skills in mind. You've got the skills to make a nice woodworking project and you've got some basic skills and, you know, using hardware and maybe doing some fine drilling and using adhesive, you probably will stand a pretty good chance of being successful on your project. If you have any questions at all about how I attached my swim pl platform or how I built it, please put it in the comments below. In the meantime, if you guys could make sure to hit that subscribe button and also check out all the other videos I got, I think you'll enjoy them. Take care and we'll see you guys all next time.